Ukrainian officials say that their air defenses repelled every single Russian air attack on Kyiv earlier today, the most intense barrage on Ukraine's capital since the start of this year. CNN's Nick Robertson is live for us in eastern Ukraine. And Nick, how are Ukrainians gearing up for this anticipated counteroffensive? Yeah, most people here are wondering where it's going to start, when it's going to start. They've heard so much about it. Uh, they obviously look at these drone strikes coming from uh, coming from Moscow. The one in Odessa, 15 uh, of 15 drones fired there. 12 got 12 were shot down on the tail fins. Were written the message from Moscow from the Kremlin. Uh, apparent reference to this uh, alleged Put uh, assassination attempt on President Putin. But for that counteroffensive you're talking about, um, the government is not saying anything. But what we've been witnessing are troops getting ready, very ready for that moment when it comes. Ukraine's counteroffensive is edging closer. Momentum building at secret locations. These battle-hardened stormtroops in live-fire training, honing tactics to take trenches just miles from the front lines, where they often put their own lives on the line. <laughs> Vlad shows us video of him storming Russian trenches a few days ago. <laughs> He shouts to the Russian troops to surrender. They shoot back. The fight continues. They wouldn't surrender, he says. We killed three of them with our grenades. When you're already fighting so well, what's the point of doing extra training like this? You can't do enough training, he says. You must do it all the time to be ready. There is every possibility the next time these troops go back to the front line, it could be part of the big counteroffensive operation. They don't know, and their commanders certainly aren't saying. Most of these troops in their early 20s. The US made M113 their training with a 60-year veteran of the type of infantry assault they'll need to punch through Russian lines. Train and train again, drilled into these young warriors. It's never enough to do, uh, like, you must train every day. If you're not training, you will die. That simple? Yeah. And have you seen, you've been in the front line, have you lost friends? Uh, yeah, I lost a, a couple of friends. Um, I don't know what to say else. It's terrible. Psychologically, you know that could be you. Uh, yeah, but like, we all can die in one minute. It, for me, it's nothing. Like, okay, <laughs> so what? I defend my country. I'm dying like a hero. It's okay for me. Confidence here has been hard earned. Camaraderie cemented in action. The test of their training coming. The only question, when? So when Ukrainians see those M113s lined up along their highways or the British-made Mastiffs or the US-made MRAPs, these important infantry fighting vehicles to take territory, when they see those convoys moving on the highways here, they're going to know this counteroffensive is getting pretty close. Jake? All right, Nick Robertson in eastern Ukraine for us. Thank you so much. Joining us now to discuss the Ukrainian ambassador to the United States, Oksana Marakova. Uh, Madam Ambassador, thank you for joining us. What, what do you make of these obviously baseless claims by Russia that Ukraine, now the United States, is behind the alleged drone attack at the Kremlin? Thank you. Thank you very much, Jake, for having me. Well, this will not be the first time Russia is lying. They have been lying during all 435 days since they reinvaded us and do all these horrible war crimes. Ukraine has been very clear that uh, is, is in no way we're involved in this attack. We don't know what it is. We don't know whether it's a provocation organized by their forces or whoever did that. But what Ukraine is doing, again, for more than 400 days now, is defending our country on our territory. And the Russian terrorist attacks 
those are the real terrorist attacks. We have seen them since February 24th last year with missiles, with drones, with Shahid drones and everything else. We just saw our reporter in Ukraine showing us how elite Ukrainian troops are preparing and training for this expected counteroffensive. Um, the U.S. Director of National Intelligence, Avril Haines, testified to Congress today on that topic. Um, take a listen. But even if Ukraine's counteroffensive is not fully successful, the Russians are unlikely to be able to mount a significant offensive operation this year. In fact, if Russia does not initiate a mandatory mobilization and secure substantial third-party ammunition supplies beyond existing deliveries from Iran and others, it will be increasingly challenging for them to sustain even modest offensive operations. Do you, do you agree with that assessment, Madam Ambassador? Do you think it's going to be tough for Russia to sustain even, even modest offensive operations? Well, we have seen them failing miserably since the offensive, uh, since their offensive started, since their war started. Uh, we already liberated more than half of what they have taken. We liberated, uh, they were not able to take Kiev in three days as they wanted to. But on the other hand, we don't want to underestimate the enemy. I mean, it's still a brutal aggressor with a lot of weapons. And we see on a daily basis what they're capable of. When they are not uh, capable in winning uh, on the front lines in a fair battle, they just resort to violence and uh, kill, rape, uh, kidnap our Ukrainian children. So we are motivated, unlike them. That is true. And um, uh, regardless, again, of the fact uh, whether we have enough weapons or do not have enough weapons, there is no other choice for us. We will continue defending our country until the full sovereignty is restored and until Russians are out of our land. Where are the Ukrainian people, where is the Ukrainian military when it comes to the many requests you've made for uh, jets, for tanks? Uh, ha has anything arrived in the country uh, in a way that you're able to use? Well, we are discussing all the capabilities with our, our friends and especially with the U.S. here. You have seen the last Ramstein meeting uh, for which we are grateful personally to Secretary Austin, who takes time and every month not only participates in bilateral discussions with us, but gathers more than 50 countries now to discuss together what can we do more. So some of the... Uh, items we already see on the battlefield, like Bradley's and others, you know, we already see them in Ukraine. Some we will surprise Russians uh, uh, when the, they will see them in the battlefield, and some we are still discussing, but we do need all the capabilities in order not only to defend the country now, but also to build the enduring strength for the future, because unless uh, some miracle happens in Russia, they will continue to be a threat to all of us, to yeah. all democratic countries. So Politico is reporting that Ukrainian officials in Kyiv are withholding details of the counteroffensive from allies, perhaps understandably uh, citing concerns over the recent leaks of highly classified U.S. documents. Um, I mean, it makes sense. I'm not faulting you. Uh, you, you wouldn't want more than a few uh, key people to know the time and place of any planned counteroffensive. But this does seem to suggest that the leak did some serious damage on the U.S.-Ukraine intelligence sharing relationship. I would disagree. I think the trust and cooperation between our countries is at the levels we never had before. And I think it's understandable that we will no, never talk publicly about uh, neither what we plan for the counteroffensive or what do we share with each other. But uh, Ukraine is very... Uh, happy with the cooperation and with how we together are working to defend our country. Ukrainian ambassador to the United States, Oksana Marakova, always an honor to have you. Thank you so much.